Hey guys. All right. So it's time to read The Debt We Owe to the Adolescent Brain. It's an informational text written by Gene Miller. Here's a little info on, oh, sorry. Here is our essential question. How do your teenage years prepare you for adulthood? Our quick start activity would be what might be special about the brains of teenagers? Make a list of questions about the adolescent brain that you'd like the text to answer. So I'd want you guys to do a minimum of three questions and a maximum of five or six questions. Once you guys are done with that, it's time to analyze the structure. The structure of a text is the way in which it is put together. In The Debt We Owe to the Adolescent Brain, the author uses heading to divide the article into sections. Previewing the article by skimming the headings can help you predict the text's structure and its patterns of organization or arrangement of ideas. Here are a couple of ideas of patterns. You've got main idea and details order, which is when the evidence supports a key idea, and there are a couple of signal words you can look for, like for example, expert, sorry, for example, experts say, others agree that. Then you have the pattern of cause and effect order, where there's a relationship between the causes and the effects. There are some signal words for that as well, because, so, as a result, and therefore. Finally, you have the compare and contrast order, which is ways in which the subjects are alike and different. And a couple of single words for that are all, most, similarly, by contrast, but, and however. Another thing we always go over is the author's purpose. It's their main reason for writing. In an informational text, usually the purpose is to inform and to explain something. But you also have the author's message, where you can find it in the main idea of what they want to convey. You should analyze how the author of this article achieves her purpose and infer what her message is by completing this chart. You'll go paragraph by paragraph. Now we have our critical vocabulary, adaptable, insulate, lethal, dependent, deplete, and paradox. Type in your answer and then hit the checkbox. Once you guys are done, remember to hit the checkbox here to send it in. Our language conventions will focus on pronoun antecedent agreement. You will see that pronouns agree with their antecedents and learn how to check them in your own writing. In this example, note that the speaker uses plural pronoun they to refer back to a plural antecedent adolescence. Adolescents are dealing with a lot, Casey says, but they should remember they have greater potential for change now than any other time. So let's go into the writing now <clears throat> and reading. Here's a little background information on the writer. Jeanne Miller grew up in the northwestern Pennsylvania, but later settled in Berkeley, California. She writes children's and young adult magazine articles on a variety of science topics. Her book, Food Science, informs young readers about food chemistry, the movement to promote local and traditional foods, and the future of food. So we begin reading, and we come to our first language conventions. Annotate in your textbook, paragraph two, by underlining all the pronouns. Then highlight the two antecedents, the nouns to which the pronouns refer to. Just like with the example of the adolescents and they, that's what you guys are going to be looking for. Then you analyze. Could the author have used the pronoun our instead of their in the last sentence and explain why or why not? Remember to check your spelling, your grammar, and your punctuation. Here's a picture of the human brain. As you can see, they use headings because it's an article, brain under construction. Then we come to analyze the structure. Annotating your textbook, signal words and phrases that show relationships between ideas in paragraph one to three. Analyze what is the author's pattern of organization in these paragraphs? How, do these pattern, how does this pattern help the author introduce and develop main ideas? We just went over the patterns, you guys. You've got cause and effect, you've got word order, Go back and look at them if you're having trouble remembering what they are. Type in your answer when you're ready. Continue reading and move on to the next question. Numbers and stats. Notice a note. In paragraph 5, what comparison does the author make using a percentage number? Highlight this statistic in your text. Then come and answer the infer question. What purpose does this number serve in the context? Here's another heading, moving on from childhood. And we have a big question this time. Note and notice, a rhetorical question has such an obvious answer that it doesn't really require an, a reply. Underline the rhetorical question in paragraph six. Why do you think the author possesses this question? Then it's time to infer. What prior knowledge or experience does the author's rhetorical question assume? 
Type in your answer. Remember to check your grammar, your spelling, and your punctuation. Continue reading, and then you come to the contrast and contradiction. Notice and note. What evidence does the author provide in paragraph 8 to contrast adolescents with children and adults? Highlight these details. Once you have those details, you come back to the platform and you type in the answer to this analyzed question. Why does the author point out these differences? What is the purpose of pointing out these differences? Then we come to the end of our reading. We have another article, Stone Age Impulses in the Modern World. We continue going here and we come to another question. This one is an analyzed author's purpose. Highlight the head heading of the last section. Consider its meaning and make a prediction about how this section helps the author achieve her purpose. Then underline possible effects of Stone Age impulses in the modern world in paragraphs 12 to 14. Once you've done that, analyze. After reading the last section, confirm or correct the prediction you made previously. What overall message does the information in this section help support? And that brings us to the end of our reading. I can't wait to see your results, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.